course, walking is so, I guess it's adaptable and flexible because I can use your workouts when I'm walking in the forest where the, you know, the terrain is uneven, or I can use it on the sidewalk or um, in a field and just the different terrains can help me to adjust. So, you know, if I'm walking on the sidewalk, the terrain is flat. So um, I know that in those kind of scenarios, I won't be um, challenging my muscles in the same way as compared to when I'm walking on a terrain that is uneven. But regardless of where I'm walking, the different workouts that you have available in all of the walking system lend themselves to every kind of terrain, every kind of weather. And I can say, you know, just like where you live in Canada, we get it all. We get extreme heat, we get extreme cold, we get wind, we get rain, we get snow. So I can use those workouts in every kind of climate, in every kind of terrain, and I can adjust the duration. Have you ever used them on the treadmill or not? Some people do. Yes. In fact, we just got a treadmill a few days ago, so I've been starting to use it on a treadmill. And uh, I'm, you know, I actually wanted to ask you some questions because, like, a level six and a level seven and a level five doesn't necessarily correspond to what it is on the treadmill. So I've had to, you know, calibrate. Yeah, you know, the, the, this has to do with. Um, awareness and your body awareness and learning again depending on what day it is if you've had sleep the night before if you you know the if there's been some issues that are whether it has to do with illness or sickness or you're just feeling off those will those you, you'll determine what level depending on what you how your body's responding and once again if you're getting into an um when you start to feel like I could do this all day long and never ever ever take a break except I would get hungry eventually. That is, that's kind of your slow steady state. When you start to feel like, oh, I'm starting to perspire. I don't think I, there's somebody next to me. I can't really put my thoughts together quite as well. I'm starting to push a little bit more. Then you're in, you know, you're in that seven or eight range. And when you start to get to the point where it's like, Oh my gosh! And about if I can, ha I can do this for about 30 more seconds at this pace, or maybe 60 seconds. But at that point, I'm going to have to pull it back. Then you're in your nines. You're at, you know, you're at your the top of your, you know, your your aerobic, and you're going into what's called anaerobic level. So it's kind of that thing where you wanna you wanna keep that steady state. You wanna keep like, okay, this feels good, but you wanna make sure that you push into the sevens, the eights, and the nines, and getting to the nines at least twice a week where you're pushing, where it's like, okay, I can do this, 30 more seconds, okay, come on, heel, toe, push, heel, toe, push, keep those shoulders back, five, four, three, okay, I gotta pull it back. And that sensation, that's when you get up to your nines, but you just have to find the numbers on your treadmill that correspond to that. So what we would typically do is put, put somebody on a treadmill and then, um, we take their heart rate, but mainly, the main thing is we do the talk test with them, and we just, it's called perceived exertion. I just look at them and I say, okay, we have you on the treadmill, you're walking four miles per hour. How does it feel? And you know, we start at 3.2, then 3.5, then four, then 4.2. This is uh, miles, not kilometers, so it would be different, but, um, and you know, we just ask, I just ask, how do you feel? And typically you get to a point where you're saying, okay, I could do this for about another 60 seconds, maybe two minutes max. And now you know you're getting up into those zones that we wanna get you at for your hit part of the workout. 